I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. We're going for a drive. Twenty twenty Toyota Prius Prime. Upgrade with technology package. And no launch control. No. <laughs> okay, that was really, really slow. Yeah, you're still accelerating and it's like nothing. <laughs> so that was all EV, but let's get to the horsepower and torque. 121 horsepower, 105 pound-feet of torque from a 1.8 liter four-cylinder with a hybrid battery system. Okay, so it's a plug-in hybrid. How far can we go on just electric? About 40 kilometers. And then how far with electric and gas? Just over a thousand kilometers. And how much is that in miles? I just flashed it up on the screen right now. It's actually a lot. It is quite a bit. And we previously reviewed this car in 2018. Some things have changed. I think we should tackle those things first. The number one thing is they say they have extending visors now. Okay, so let's test this out. Three, two, one. Doesn't count. Toyota, this is not an extending visor. This is an extension of a visor. That's a fail. I think that's kind of what they wrote, but it's still a fail. The next Prius in another five years will have the full extending. But they probably added that because of us. So I'd, I'd like to think so. At least we did something. The next thing they've done is made it a five seater. The last one we drove was only a four seater. It's super weird that it was a four seater. Like why didn't they just do that from the get go? I don't know. Battery stuff, I guess. But anyways, it's there now. And the next thing, which is the most amazing part is we now have Apple CarPlay. Yes, we do. How about Android Auto? Oh no, no how, we don't. How about Amazon Alexa? Oh, of course we've got Amazon Alexa in here. Hmm. Why wouldn't we? This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, got to order some more hand sanitizer. Mm. Alexa, no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, in the last 2018 video, we hated the infotainment map because it took up the whole screen and you couldn't ever get rid of it. And we still hate it, however. When you plug in your Apple CarPlay, it stays at the very top, so now you can get rid of the map. You can have your Google Maps on Apple CarPlay because nobody uses Apple Maps and your satellite radio stuff at the bottom. So they've actually made the infotainment functional now. They've added some improvements for sure. So is that pretty much everything they changed in 2020? As far as I'm concerned, yes. Okay, so let's start with the looks now. Looks like a Prius and I really like it. Yeah, I don't think we need to go too in detail. It still looks kind of the same. They didn't really change anything. I like this color. From like certain angles, it looks kind of like the new BMW i4 color and everything like electric-y. I still like the previous color that we had, that like bluish green kind of thing. But this looks good. I like how it looks very future. It looks like something out of a future movie from like 10 years ago. It definitely looks very future. I still don't really like it, especially the back, but it still looks all right. It's definitely a Prius. You know what my favorite part is now? What? This little section right here here in front of the window. The way it kind of molds around, I just really like it. Oh, okay, fair enough. You know what I noticed in that section, just above that in the mirror section? The uh, little fins there? Yeah, the Toyota Supra was missing those and that's why we had buffeting probably. Yeah, Toyota solved their own issue on the wrong car. <laughs> We still have a really cool pattern in the front grille that's not really a grille, it's just plastic. And the headlights actually look pretty cool because you can see all the individual LEDs everywhere, including in the fog lights. They look pretty wild. Yeah, for not being a modern style LED line, they look good. And we still have the same crappy wheels. They're not exactly too electric -y and they're not like too fancy in or anything. I just, I don't really like them. I think they're a good amount of electric. I like these kinds. No, this needs the Tycon ones with like the, the turbo fan <laughs> kind of thing. They feel faster. But <laughs> what is the Continental recommended tire for the Prius? The Pro Contact TX. Did you notice that this has a floating roof design? I did, slightly. I think it looks kind of okay. Yeah, it's nothing too special, but the special part is the rear hatch and the glass. Okay, so it's like really weird shaped glass, which is probably gonna cost so much to repair and replace. <laughs> and speaking of costing a lot, we actually do have a carbon fiber hatch. It looks really cool. It makes you feel like you're in something special every time you open the trunk up. Yeah, just like a race car and it's got crazy shapes to it. I like it. And just like the last video, I still like the other Prius taillights more than I like the ones on the Prius Prime, but I think it looks fine. What do you think of the exhaust tip? Oh, exhaust tip is fantastic. It's buried underneath and it's still real. So overall, looks wise? It looks like a Prius. It looks like it should. I still don't really like it, but it's not that bad. And I totally don't mind it. I actually kind of like it. So before I drive, let's talk about this infotainment and gauges some more. Okay, first thing I noticed when I got in was there was a crazy reflection from outside bouncing on the screen at me. It'd be a lot better if the screen was in like a different position so there's less glare, even though it is a matte screen. And I still like the fact that it's not laggy at all. Any button that you press comes up quick. All the animations are quick. The energy monitor is pretty cool. So I do like this infotainment, but I don't like it overall in comparison to other infotainments. And then we still have touch buttons on the side. So it's just, there's a lot of touch. It's not the best. It's not like Tesla or anything like that. And then even when you use your satellite radio, 
everything is so small, it's hard to see everything, and you can't rewind or anything like that. But you can display it below your Apple CarPlay now, like you said. Which so. is nice. And then we still have center gauges in the middle, which are still weird to get used to, but you can get used to them pretty quick. Yeah, it's still pretty cluttered, but you do get used to it, and you've got all the information up in your head-up display as well. You can see your EV meter and your speed and change all that stuff. Yeah, and you can see when you change your drive modes and stuff, but we'll get to that a little bit later. And unlike a lot of car companies that screw everything up, you can actually see how much range you have right here under the speed. Yeah, it's dead center, and then you also have a battery percentage to the right of that, so functionally, it's all there. Like yeah. Everything you need is the there. The most important stuff for a hypermiling car. Yes. The only thing that would be good if they added was the pure electric range when you're in pure electric mode. Yeah, but I think there's so many ways they can kick out of pure electric mode that it'd be kind of hard to do that. But we do have a little score thing as well, which I had a hard time understanding. You know what the best score thing we ever used was? What, the Leafs? The, the butterflies. Not, the butterflies, yeah. In, from in the, the Ford, Ford uh, uh, Focus S Electric. Yeah, I was going to call it an Escape. Man, <laughs> they don't even make cars anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so with all that stuff out of the way, let's get you behind the wheel. We'll talk about the interior and all the drive modes. All right, and right. some driving. Driving, some I guess. Some horsepowers and some torques. Do you really care about driving in this? Yeah. Mm, let's see. No. Yo, rev it for me. Full power launch control. Brake boost. <laughs> <laughs> My God, this is so slow. <laughs> It that was in power mode. It actually sounded like there was a launch control. I know, it really <laughs> like, did. Like, is this a launch control? It's like the battery's charging. Okay, so we should probably get to these drive modes because there's a lot of them and it's kind of confusing. We have drive mode button, which <laughs> goes from normal, eco, and power. And then we have HV EV mode as well. Yeah, so HV will prioritize the gas engine and the electric engine, and then the EV mode will put it in as much electric as possible. And the craziest part is after reading the comments on our last video is that this actually has a third function if you hold it. So if you hold the button down, it goes into charge mode. So when you let off, it'll help charge up the battery because before we didn't know how to get that done. Yeah, and I love that they have that. And it's confusing because nobody knows that this button has a third function, but I'm glad that it has that function because it's really cool. And then we have an EV auto button to the right of that, which helps put you into electric mode more as well. And to be honest, that's probably the best mode for this car. The modes are kind of confusing. Lucky for us, our buddy Linus here <laughs> did a, a couple videos on the 2017 Prius to help describe all those modes. Thanks, Linus. <laughs> <laughs> we do not know Linus. No, we don't. We just subscribe to his channel. And then there's also a brake mode on the shifter. Yeah, so that brake mode is your regen braking, so you can maximize it by putting it into B mode, but it's definitely not one pedal drive. Okay, so let me put you into full eco mode, put you into charge mode, and then put you into brake mode. I'm going to let off. I mean, it's slowing down, but it's definitely not one pedal. But when you come to a complete stop, and then you start going again, you can really hear everything kick in to start charging. So let's send this into cliche corner in power mode while also charging. Okay, there's obviously tons of body roll, but I mean, it's not the worst. <laughs> <laughs> it's that low center of gravity that feels so good. I guess, maybe that carbon fiber hatch is also helping, but we also have an eCVT, and to be honest, in this car, I don't really mind it, and I think it's one of the better CVTs. Like, it's not horrible is how I will describe it. I don't mind CVTs at all in slow cars. I think there are worse CVTs and there are better ones. I think this is one of the better ones, especially for a car like this. This is like all about maximum efficiency, so it makes sense why this has one and the way it works. I really want to drive that Mitsubishi that Savage Geese drove with a CVT that doesn't imitate gears. It just stays pinged. That's kind of how it should be. Like, like That's what this does. You just don't have a tack. But even after all that, I'm still confused by all the drive modes. Oh, I know. That's why I said just leave it in EV auto, basically, and drive, probably. I say you just get in the car, put it into normal, even. I, I still <laughs> well, don't really know what they want me to do. Normal plus EV auto, because the third function is EV auto. So you, you see what I mean, people? We, we still can't <laughs> come to a conclusion. Yeah. So let me just floor it while we're driving. And then the gas engine kicks in, and it's definitely still quite slow. But. You want this for the range anyways, so that doesn't really matter. Not at all. But while you're ranging it out, do you want lane keep and cruise control? Well, you probably would. This does have adaptive cruise control, but it does not have good lane keep. Well, that makes some sense, I guess. It's just like bad lane departure, but I feel like a lot of the Toyotas we've been reviewing recently have the new good lane keep. Yeah, so they updated some things on this, but not everything. And something else that people probably care about trying to get maximum range is a really comfortable suspension. And this nails that. This has amazing suspension. Yep, I've had no issues with it at all. The damping is great. They nailed what people want in a car like this. Then we also have a bunch of nice safety features for people who want to drive a car like this, like 
blind spot monitoring and like collision assist. And then they probably want really light steering, which this delivers on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, nice and light. I love light steering in cars like this. And people trying to get maximum range probably also care about charging. So this does have level one and level two charging, no level three. Which is fine because it's a plug-in hybrid, not a full electric. Yeah, so level two is about two hours, and then level one, which is your standard plug at home, is about five and a half hours. Which makes perfect sense if you plug this in at night. Yeah, go to work, 40 kilometers, no problem. And it does have all the apps and the scheduling and everything so you can charge when it's not peak hour. Yeah, and because it's a plug-in hybrid, you don't have to think about charging, you don't really have to think about anything because it, it can just charge itself as well. One more drive mode thing, come to a stop. Guess what happens when we put it in reverse? that beep I forgot about that yeah no more of that speaking of being in reverse though rearview mirror visibility is amazing and we have a reverse camera is the resolution good on the reverse camera not my ideal resolution so then I guess we should probably talk about the interior yeah we should probably get to these seats because they're really comfortable no issues at all and you've got a lot of lumbar support on the driver's side yeah a little bit much actually I'm gonna deflate that right now but there's obviously no side bolstering because this isn't a car that really needs it what do you think of the general look of the interior do you like all this piano black still oh I still hate it like despise it it's all around the cup holder area which is exactly where you'd spill your coffee I've been making coffee at home and it fits a thermos no problem there you go I think it would fit a small cup as well and in front of that we have a wireless charger which is useless because we don't have wireless CarPlay maybe it works for charging your Amazon Alexa puck <laughs> I don't know how Amazon Alexa works in a car I'm sorry I don't either I'm not even gonna bother trying because who wants Amazon Alexa in a car anyways just give me Android Auto but we do have heated seats and they're actually in a decent spot and it's hard button so once you turn it on it'll stay on and then we also have a heated steering wheel and it's on the steering wheel in a gloss black button and the steering wheel itself feels pretty good the fake leather quality is quite good yeah I really like it how do you like the visibility up here with these little windows in front of the mirror oh it's amazing like this visibility in this car is stupendous I think maybe <laughs> it helps how they have a flat bump in the hood before the hood goes down like that's a pretty cool hood line it is a pretty cool feature from the outside how about the back seat room back seat room is not the best for headroom okay for leg room that's a one thumb up one thumb out of two is still pretty good. Yeah, yeah, 50% <laughs> thumbs. And the trunk room is good. We already showed you the, no, we didn't show you the box test. Box test! The Prius fits 10 boxes still, just like last time. So shout out to all our box test members. Emmett, CF Drive Co, Six Set Toronto, Slow Runner, The Forerunner, Matt Brand Cars, Andy The Lab, and Kevsky Pop and Ryan C. Get your own box on patreon.com slash the straight pipes. And we have grocery bag hangers back there, which is awesome. And our little section for the charger at the very back. So that's it with the 2020 Prius Prime. Let's get to the price. Let's get to the price. Starts at $34,990. Canadian. And this one is $39,862. Pretty good price. But the problem is that the Hyundai Ioniq still exists. And I think we still both prefer that one. Yeah, everything in a Hyundai is kind of just better to use than in this Prius. Like, how much more did we like all the eco features in the Hyundai? We liked everything about the Hyundai more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. That, that's the thing. Not that this is a bad car, but we just liked the Hyundai more. So let us know what you think of the Prius Prime. Two years after we reviewed it, is there still a reason to buy it with all the other electric and hybrid cars that have come out since? Do you also prefer the Hyundai Ionic? Let us know in the comments and check out this playlist right here. Eco cars? I guess. Let's, yeah. go, let's go eco cars. Electric, eco. Eco-ish. Watch the Porsche Taycan video. <laughs> How about just the Ionic video? Yeah, I guess. Watch that road trip video.